so hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you welcome back once again to another session of pib 247 in today's class we are going to talk about the pib news from 23rd and 24th of january 2023 and i hope you guys have enjoyed the republic day uh, yesterday i hope you guys have watched the parade and enjoyed it right so let's begin with the session and let's start with the very first question which says which ministry has organized india cold chain conclave in new delhi along with phd chamber of commerce and industry and national center for cold chain development so you are just required to tell the name of uh, the ministry which has organized this india cold chain conclave right so and question number 2 is also based on it so let's talk about this conclave and then we will come back to the question so india cold chain conclave it was recently held in new delhi right first of all it took place in new delhi now why did it take place it took place to support the development of the cold chain industry so that we could ensure the food security and public health in the nation right basically to support the development of cold chain industry and cold chain supply ki hame kitni zyada zarurat hai we all know right now if i talk about the broader objective of this india cold chain conclave so it it, it you know it gave a platform to all the stakeholders so that they can contribute their their own thoughts and ideas on how we can grow the industry of cold chain how we can grow uh, the cold chain industry right and also how we can ex- how we can also reduce the post harvest losses with the use of relevant technologies in the cold chain ecosystem theek okay? hai it was organized by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare headed by mr narendra singh tomar and Uh, along with phd chamber of commerce and industry however the knowledge partner was the national center for cold chain development do remember this fact also right now in conference with the conclave an exhibition was also organized where the demonstration of innovations and excellence in cold chain sector was presented right and during this conclave an approval was also given approval was given to whom the approval was accorded to product specific horticulture clusters under horticulture cluster development program so i hope that you all know that there are 12 pilot clusters 12 pilot clusters under the horticulture cluster development program now out of this 12 pilot clusters five uh, clusters have been given approval right and these are the five clusters which have been given the approval which are apple in shopia which means in shopia apple cluster will be developed right banana in anandpur of andhra pradesh grape in uh, nasik mango in uh, mehboob nagar of telangana and turmeric in west jaintia hills of meghalaya all right so that is all about this news and let's start talk about question number 1 again so question number 1 is about the ministry so that's ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare option a is the correct answer and what about question number 2 Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has given approval to five product specific horticulture clusters out of total selected clusters identified for pilot phase which of the following are not part of these five approved clusters so apple in shopia banana in anandpur grape in nashik mango in mahboob nagar and turmeric in west jaintia hills all are among those five clusters which have been given this approval so that's why option e will be the correct answer none of the above all right and now guys let's talk about question number 3 the third meeting of national level steering committee of atal bhujal yojana was recently held in new delhi so you have to identify incorrect statement about this scheme now i believe ki is scheme se this time in the year 2023 i expect a question from this scheme because for the last 2 years there there is no question from this scheme and this time it is in news uh and i believe if if i consider if i take the phase 1 in uh, month of april so it is in the news 3 or 4 months before the examination so you can expect a question from atal bhujal yojana right so let's talk about atal bhujal yojana then we will again come back to the question so objective is pretty much clear from the name itself atal is after the great atal bihari vajpayee bhujal means ground water right so basically we are talking about ground water when we are talking about the schemes now what can we do with ground water of course it's management right so basically this scheme is all about the management of ground water right i hope you got my point so to demonstrate community led sustainable ground water management and to improve the management of ground water resources right it was launched uh, about 2 uh, years back in the year 2020 by ministry of jal shakti headed by gajendra singh shekhawat and the duration is 5 year that is up to 2025 right 
and it is not mentioned that it is whether it is 31st March 2025 or 31st December 2025. So, वो बाद में हमें पता चल जाएगा अभी के लिए 2020 to 2025. Now outlay. If I talk about the outlay, so the total outlay is 6,000 crores, out of which 50% is given by the World Bank, that is 3,000 crores, and 3,000 crore will be borne by the central government entirely, which means it is a Central sector scheme where the entire funding is given by the central government, right? It is being implemented in eight double two zero water stressed gram panchayats of two twenty nine administrative blocks in eighty districts of seven states. Now, of course, you cannot remember eighty districts. You cannot remember eight thousand two hundred and twenty two gram panchayats. You cannot remember two twenty nine administrative blocks, but you can remember the name of those seven states, right? And these are Gujarat. Haryana, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, and Uttar Pradesh. All right. Now there are two components under this particular scheme. Number one is incentive component, which is for incentivizing the states for converging uh, various government schemes of the central and state governments for groundwater management. Right. The total outlay of this component is forty six hundred crore, and the entire funding given by the World Bank three thousand crore is for this component only. And the rest, sixteen hundred crore, is given by the central government. Right. The second component is for institutional strengthening and capacity building of the stakeholders, which can uh, improve the groundwater resources, which have the potential to manage the groundwater resources. Right. It envisages the strengthening institutional capacity at all levels, including state, district, block, gram panchayat, whatever levels are there. And the outlay is the rest, fourteen hundred crores, and that is to be contributed by central government. All right, so that is all about Atal Bhujal Yojana. I hope this is clear. And now let's identify the incorrect statement. It was launched in 2020 by Ministry of Jal Shakti. Absolutely right. It is a central sector scheme with total outlay of 6,000 crores. Correct. It is being implemented in all state solutions across the country. No, it is being implemented in water stressed countries, right? And uh, water stressed states, which are seven in number. So option C will be the correct answer because we have to identify the incorrect statement. Question number <clears throat> four. Yes, this is also a very important question. Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterway recently notified the Major Ports Adjudicatory Board Rules 2023, framed under Major Port Authorities Act of 2021, for formulation of an adjudicatory board for major ports. Now, any dispute will be resolved by this board only, right? So you have to identify the correct statement about the board. So let's talk about. Uh, what are some of the major provisions about this adjudicatory board for major ports? Right. So remember, it shall be constituted under Section 54 of Major Ports Authority Act of 2021, and uh, it will perform. You know, it will be uh, it will be performing the function of the existing tariff authority for major ports, which will cease to exist after the establishment or formation of adjudicatory board for major ports right abhi rules aaye hain jab ye establish ho jayega then the tariff authority for major ports uh, will cease to exist and all the functions of uh, tariff authority for major ports will be transferred to the adjudicatory board for major ports right now it shall consist of a presiding officer and two members and presiding officer shall be a retired judge of supreme court of india or a retired chief justice of any high court right and the two members what is the uh, what are the qualifications of the two members the two members shall either be a chief secretary of a state government or equivalent to that post or a retired secretary of the central government or equivalent to that post okay now appointment of the presiding officer and the members shall be done uh, based on the uh, recommendation of a selection committee which shall consist of cji chief justice of india or his nominee and current cgi of course we all know is dy chandrachur secretary of the department of personnel and training and secretary in the ministry of port shipping and waterways so there shall be three uh, members in the selection committee cgi or his nominee right secretary in the department of personnel and training and secretary in the ministry of port shipping and waterways right and what about functions what will it do so it shall carry out the functions uh, which is which are currently performed by tariff authority for major ports and also it will adjudicate any dispute or claims related to rights and obligations of major ports and ppp concessionaires so basically any uh, dispute 
uh, which which is which arises among these sports or the public private partnership concerners shall be adjudicated by this board right so now let's identify the correct statements the board shall be constituted under section 54 absolutely correct it shall consist of a presiding officer and three members is that so no there will be two members right so this is incorrect this is correct the presiding officer shall be a retired judge of supreme court of india or a retired chief justice or a, of a high court so one and three are correct which means option c only one and three will be the correct answer question number 5 Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways again in news in association with India Ports Global Limited recently conducted a workshop on linking Chabahar Port with INSTC. So now Chabahar Port, Chabahar Port, which is located in Iran, right, will be connected with INSTC in Mumbai. International North South uh, Transport Corridor, which is INSTC, is a multi-modal transportation route linking which ocean and Persian Gulf to Caspian Sea via Iran and onward. to northern europe via st petersburg in russia so basically this route connects indian ocean and persian gulf to caspian sea via iran and then it take it forward and this route uh, move ahead to northern europe via st petersburg in russia theek okay? hai so the correct answer is indian ocean but however let's talk about instc so remember instc is a multimodal transportation route which links indian ocean and persian gulf to caspian sea via iran and then it goes forward to northern europe via st petersburg in russia it is india's vision and initiative to reduce the time taking for the export import shipments to reach russia europe and enter the central asian markets so it will reduce the time thereby it will reduce the fuel also right it will reduce it will enhance the uh, you know the capacity of the exporters and the importers right aur jaldi maal pahunchega to jaldi fayda pe aayega right now it envisages the movement of goods from mumbai india to shahid behishti port in chahabar uh, by sea chahabar to uh, bandar e anjali iranian port on caspian sea by road bandar e anjali to astrakhan by ship across the caspian sea and from astrakhan to other regions of russia and further into europe by russian railways this is the actual route starting from mumbai to uh, russia right so ye agar aap yaad rakhna chahte ho to rakh sakte ho otherwise it is not required so that is all about it and i already told you the answer that's indian ocean option a is the correct answer and now let's talk about subhash chandra bose abda prabandhan puraskar very very important uh, news uh, so in english it can be uh, called as disaster management awards subhash chandra bose disaster management awards right so you need to identify the correct statement so let's talk about this ministry of home affairs which is currently headed by mr ramit shah who is also the minister of cooperation has Uh, presented the subhash chandra bose abdar prabandhan puraskar for the year 2023 and remember these awards were started last year in the year 2022 and uh, are given to individuals and organizations for their excellent work in disaster management right so let's talk something about uh, this award and then we will uh, uh, you know move ahead to the winners so objective is very clear to recognize and honor the invaluable contribution and selfless service and badi badi baatein rendered by individuals and organizations in india in the field of disaster management so basically uh, it is given to those individuals and organizations which have done exceptionally well in the area of disaster management in simple words it was launched in the year 2022 by ministry of home affairs and the awards are given in two categories that is institution and individual organization and individual institutions uh, get rupees 50 1 lakh rupees cash prize and a certificate however individuals get rupees 5 lakh prize and a certificate and this time the winners if i talk about the winners so the awards this time were given in the institutional category only there was uh, no winner in the individual category individual category mein no one qualified to be a winner right and there were two uh, institutions which got which got this prize number one is odisha state disaster management authority for its exceptional performance for its effective response during various cyclones like hudud fani amfan and odisha floods of 2020 and then other organization or institution is lunglei fire station of mizoram which responded uh, effectively to a massive forest fire which was reported in the month of april 2021 in the uninhabited forest areas surrounded lunglei town 
right so that's why these two institutions have been awarded this uh, disaster management award and now let's try to identify the correct statement about scbos abda prabandhan prabandhan puraskar so ministry of home affairs is the nodal ministry of this award correct it was launched in 2022 on 125th birth anniversary of the great uh, netaji yes it is given in only one category no it is given in two categories it recognizes and honors the invaluable contribution in the field of disaster management so only 1 2 and 4 are correct which means option b will be the correct answer and now guys let's talk about the questions in short which do not need much explanation but before that if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join this telegram channel the link is provided in the description and if you want to ask anything related to examination you can follow me here so now let's talk about question number 7 india recently had participated in first movers coalition leadership meeting which deliberated on the world need for clean energy technologies to confront climate crisis globally which international organization had organized this meeting so very straight forward question it was organized by world economic forum option b is the correct answer question number 8 is quite interesting india has emerged as the world's largest producer and consumer of sugar as well as the world's second largest exporter of sugar after brazil in sugar season of october to september 2021 22 how much sugar cane was produced in the country during this season right so the amount of sugar that was produced was 5 lakh metric tons right option d is the correct answer sorry not 5 lakh 5000 lakh metric tons option d is the correct answer question number 9 indian institute of entrepreneurship is an autonomous organization under the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship where is it located so very uh, direct question it is located in guwahati in assam option e is the correct answer i believe there is no need of explanation here and the last question for today ministry of tourism headed by g kishan reddy who is also the minister of culture is participating in international uh, tourism fair which is known as fitur uh, which is one of the world's largest international travel exhibitions so where this exhibition is taking place so it is taking place in madrid option b is the correct answer all right guys so that is for today's session i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear and uh i will see you in the next class on monday all right till then keep studying and keep studying hard don't wait for the notification just uh press your accelerators just gear up your preparations right so goodbye take care and god bless